On today's episode, we're gonna be talking about grilled calamari. To get started making our grilled calamari, we're gonna use two pounds of fresh squid. So for this, I went to a local fish market and the squid is whole. You can just ask them to clean it. They'll pull off the skins, clean out the insides, cut off the eyes, and this is what you're left with. So you're gonna use the whole squid. This is about six pieces, which is about two pounds. Uh, we're gonna take this and we're gonna make a marinade. So most people will, I think everyone I know has tried or has had fried calamari. But grilled calamari is actually so refreshing, very easy to do, and it tastes delicious. So we're gonna use a fourth of a cup of olive oil for our marinade. And again, this one's so easy because you can buy this just like this at the market and the marinade's so simple. We're gonna use a teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of black pepper, and for this one, we're gonna use paprika. This gives it a really nice flavor. So we're gonna use a teaspoon of paprika for this. And it will also give it a really pretty color because when we char grill it, it's gonna add a nice color to it. So we'll whisk that together. Look how easy that was. Didn't even take any time. I'm gonna transfer these right to a bowl because then this will be easier for me. You can put it in a Ziploc or a bowl because we're gonna put it in the fridge. So I'm gonna put the marinade on it and kind of mix it around, get it all on all the pieces. And you're just gonna stick this in the fridge for at least 30 minutes. You could do a little longer. And then we're just gonna throw it on the grill. It's so simple, it's so good. So I'm gonna cover this and put it in the fridge. I'm gonna put these calamari right on the grill whole, and we're gonna grill these for about three to five minutes on either side. You could see the beautiful color on this from the paprika and the char grilling here. They're almost ready. Leave it another minute and we're already ready to serve. We could see how juicy these calamari are. They're ready for me to take off the grill. We're gonna go in and serve them. Our calamari's ready, we're ready to plate it. So I'm gonna take the big, our whole bodies of our calamari and we're gonna cut them into about a half inch rings. Oh, it smells so good. Can't wait to eat this. So we're gonna plate these on this platter and then I'm gonna make lemon olive oil sauce to go on top. You know, when we had our restaurant, and we used to serve calamari either fried or grilled. Some people would always ask, oh, you don't serve this with marinara? That's not a Greek thing. We like to serve everything with lemon. So we always used to let them try with lemon, and then of course, if they wanted marinara, we would give that to them too. But fresh grilled calamari is so good. This is great, nice, refreshing for the summer. You can add this to any salad and really just make it a full entree if you didn't want to have it as an appetizer nice and meaty. Look at that. That looks great. We're gonna pile this on. Now you could cut these tentacles as well, but they're my favorite part. So I'm gonna put them whole right on the platter just to make it look pretty. Look at this one. That looks beautiful. We'll put those on the platter. We'll make our lemon olive oil sauce that we literally put on everything. Again, you can get the recipe online, but this is just lemon and olive oil. So we have a good amount of olive oil, a little fresh lemon juice, some salt, pepper, a little pepper, salt, a little oregano. We're gonna whisk that together. I always make this sauce 
and pour it on top of all my dishes right before I'm ready to serve. So we're gonna pour this on top. Look at that, so good. And we're gonna do some little garnish. We need a little lemon. Cut that in half on our platter. Put that right here. And I'm gonna actually chop a little bit of parsley for some more color. So just a little bit. I'm gonna take here. You can finally chop that. Just sprinkle a little bit on top for some color. I'm gonna put a little whole piece right here. It's all about the presentation, right? We'll put that there, and this is ready to serve. Today I'm going to show you three recipes using a very popular Greek cheese, halloumi. Halloumi is a Cyprian cheese made with cow, goat, and sheep milk. And here in America we like to describe it as it's similar to fresh mozzarella. You can buy this halloumi at any local specialty grocery store and when you are cooking it, it's best to grill it. It softens it up and brings out the delicious flavor. So we're gonna get started with just cutting it and then we're gonna grill it on the flat top. So when you're working with this cheese, make sure you're cutting it in larger size pieces so it doesn't crumble. That looks great. And our nice thick slices, I'm gonna use two blocks of this cheese so that you guys can see the three different recipes that I'm gonna be using. Now that we've cut this, we're ready to grill. Unlike mozzarella, this is not a very good melting cheese and it holds its shape when grilling it. So we're just gonna grill this with nothing on our flat top. You could also use a charcoal, which is also great. We're just gonna put these down and it's gonna get this great color on the other side before we flip them. So we're gonna flip them when you see this nice brown color on the other side. That means that we've really caramelized the cheese and brought out all the nice flavors. Now that we've grilled our halloumi, I'm gonna grill some pita bread with just a little bit of olive oil for two of our recipes that I'm gonna show you. We're just gonna lightly brush some olive oil on our pita bread and just lightly grill it on either side. We use lots of olive oil when cooking. You'll see, you'll see olive oil in everything I do. Now that we've grilled our halloumi cheese and I've grilled some pita, I'm gonna get started on our appetizer. So I have just sliced some cucumbers just to make the platter look nice and I'm gonna put some pieces of halloumi cheese just down the center and I'm gonna make a Greek salsa to put on top of this. So delicious. We actually used to serve this appetizer at our restaurant with a slice of cucumber and tomato underneath that which you could do as well. So to get started on our salsa, we're gonna do some chopped tomato, chopped cucumber, and this salsa is so good with so many things. You can use this as a topping on a burger. I'm gonna use this on the top of our halloumi. This is on red onion, parsley, and I'm gonna just give that a little toss. We're just gonna add Shocker, olive oil. So we need some olive oil, some fresh lemon juice, pepper, and salt. So we'll give that a little toss there. And we're gonna put this right on top of our halloumi cheese. And you can serve this, this is such a great summer or winter dish. And you can serve this at, you know, make a little platter of this when people are coming over. It's a great, Top. Look how pretty. Look 
colorful, colorful. We always want everything to look pretty. <laughs> so we have our little sauce on top. We'll leave this for something else. And we're just gonna drizzle some balsamic reduction on top. Look at that, ready to serve. And I'm gonna serve this with some grilled pita. So I'm just gonna take our pita, cut that into small triangles. Put that on the sides or on another platter. We can put that like this. And this is delicious. So for our next recipe, we're gonna make a sandwich. Delicious grilled vegetables, halloumi, and a little hummus sandwich. So I'm gonna use just a whole grilled pita. And I'm gonna wrap this actually with a little wax paper. So I'm gonna put the pita down. I'm just gonna take some grilled veggies. These are so easy to grill. I just used some sliced eggplant, red pepper, zucchini, and red onion. Tossed it with some olive oil, salt, pepper, and oregano, and grilled it on the flat top. I'm gonna put a little hummus first. And I'm using a little pine nut hummus, which is a little crunch. I love that. And we're gonna put vegetables, a little eggplant, pepper, zucchini, and some onion. A little grilled halloumi on top, some extra flavor. I'm just gonna wrap this. A little taco. Look at that pita wrap. Delicious. Our last recipe we're gonna make with halloumi is my twist on Caesar salad. We're gonna make a Greek Caesar salad. So to get started with this, I'm actually gonna make the dressing first. So our dressing we're gonna use one cup of Greek yogurt. I use full fat, you could also use 2%. I don't recommend using the no fat yogurt because you want the flavor in that. So we're gonna use some pureed fresh garlic. We're gonna put a half of uh, fresh lemon juice, half of a lemon. We need two tablespoons olive oil. These are pureed capers, which gives it some delicious salty flavor. Anchovy paste, which if you don't like anchovy, you can always add a little bit more capers to this. This is Worcestershire sauce, which I never know how to say, so please don't make fun of me. So we'll put that in there. And we're gonna blend this together, mix this together. And then after I get all of these ingredients incorporated, then I'm gonna add in some grated cheese. So this is, you're gonna be pleasantly surprised. This has such a nice little tang from the Greek yogurt, but delicious with the lemon. So we have gotten all of these ingredients Nice, and I'm just gonna add a teaspoon of salt and pepper. Mix this together. Last, we're gonna add in a little grated cheese. So we have our dressing ready, and I'm gonna take some chopped romaine lettuce. I'm actually gonna add chickpeas, which is a little Greek twist to that. So I add some, one can of chickpeas, some cut up cucumbers, and I'm actually gonna toss this with the dressing before I add our cute croutons and our grilled halloumi cheese. So I'll put this in the mixing bowl, toss that with some tongs to make sure we coat all of the ingredients with the dressing. And I really can't wait for you guys to try this at home. It is so delicious. I have tossed all of our ingredients with the Caesar dressing, and I'm gonna put that into our bowl. 
Look at that. I love when you toss the dressing in. I really think it gives the entire salad a nice flavor because that way when you're eating it, everything has all the dressing on it. So we're gonna put some croutons on top and then our grilled bologna cheese. You can chop this up if you like. I'm just gonna lay it right on top and it looks so good. And the caramelization from the cheese is just gonna give it a nice, really beautiful flavor. Put that there. Ready to present our salad. Join me on today's episode where we're making vineyard salmon, which basically is salmon wrapped in grape leaves. To get started with making our salmon wrapped in grape leaves, first we need to get our grape leaves ready. So if you have a grapevine in your backyard, or maybe your parents do, I know mine do, you can pick the grape leaves off of the vine, or you can buy a jar at a gourmet shop, local Greek store. Here I have um, Krinos makes a one pound jar of grape leaves. So we're gonna rinse these, drape them, to let them dry, and then we'll get started on the salmon. So we'll go to the sink. You can pull these out. They are actually neatly wrapped together. So we're gonna unfold them and rinse them over cold water. Carefully pull them apart. We're gonna let them dry while we get our salmon prepared. So our grape leaves are rinsed and let's get started with making our filling. So for our filling here, or I should say our little Greek salsa that we're gonna make, that's gonna go on top of our salmon, we're gonna use a half a white onion and we're gonna just finely chop this. So we have our onion chopped up I'm gonna put that right in the bowl. And next, we're gonna chop up our garlic. We're gonna chop up our garlic. And I love the flavor that the garlic gives, so I like to use five cloves of garlic because it's gonna give it really nice flavor. Just chop that up. Okay. Finally chop that. Put our garlic into our bowl. Next, we're gonna do our tomato. So we are just doing a medium tomato here. You don't have to seed it or anything, just give it a nice little chop. Chop up our tomato. That goes right in our bowl. And next we're gonna do, I'm just gonna add capers. I love the way the flavor that capers give, and it gives it a nice little extra salt too. Next, we have roasted red pepper. So we have a whole pepper here that I drained, and then I'm just gonna chop that up. And this has a nice little smoky flavor, so I really like this. So now we have our red pepper. Roasted red pepper chopped up, put that in there. I'm gonna wipe my cutting board and then we're gonna chop up our parsley to mix up our salsa. So we're all cleaned up. Now we're gonna do some parsley and olive oil and then our salsa will be all ready for our salmon. I'm gonna take some parsley. Chop this in. And this is great because we're gonna put this sauce on top of our salmon before you wrap it into the grape leaves. And it's all gonna cook on top and it's gonna give such a great flavor when it's steamed in the grape leaves. Great. There we go, some parsley. So to finish this, of course we need olive oil. Let's put some olive oil on here. Look at that, 
So pretty, love all the colors. Give that a nice little toss. Beautiful. It's gonna go well, so well with the fish. So we'll mix this. We're gonna let that sit while we get our salmon ready. So I'll leave that over here. And now our salmon. So here for the salmon, I'm gonna use, you could use five or six ounce pieces, um, portions. I just find that goes really well because if you're making this for five or six people for dinner, you wanna make sure that you have one for each person. So I'm just gonna season with salt and pepper on each one, on either side. You always want to salt and pepper your fish. So we're gonna do that on either side. Okay, our fish are seasoned and now we're ready to wrap them. So now we have our grape leaves. So, grape leaves, some of them are gonna be nice and big, so they'll be different sizes. This will be hard for me to tell you exactly how many, so I'd rather show you so that you could see. So when you pull these apart, there is gonna be the veins of the stem are inside, and then the shiny side on this, on the outer side. So we want this to be our outer side of our fish. So we're gonna lay them on the cutting board with the stem side up, or the little veins side up. And I'm gonna layer them to kind of make my little pocket. So we're gonna layer these on top. So if you have big size grape leaves, you probably only need four, but depending on the size, you wanna make sure that it covers the entire salmon. So we're gonna pull these apart and wrap them like this. So you're gonna lay them down flat. I'm gonna stick this little guy in here too. So covers the whole um, area. So here we go. Now we're ready. We're gonna take a piece of salmon, put that right in the center, and we're gonna take a good amount of this salsa that we made, at least two tablespoons on top. But I'll show you. You're gonna cover the top of this. Look at that, that looks amazing. So we're gonna cover the top of that and then we're gonna flip one side over of the salmon, nice and tight. The grape leaf on that side and on that side, nice and tight. And you're gonna pinch down at the edge of where the salmon ends, flip that over, and we're gonna wrap it nice and tight. Look at that, looks great. And that's gonna go right here on our tray while we wrap the rest of them. We'll lay them on parchment and bake them in the oven. So we're gonna wrap these up. This is also a great item to make ahead of time. If you have guests coming over and you kind of wanted to make something a little different, you can wrap these up and you're only baking them in the oven for about 12 minutes. So you can make it really quickly. So the word abelu or abeli, I should say, means grape vineyard in Greece. So that's where we get the name from this. And I guess so the vineyard had these grape leaves. Usually we make traditional domadas with them, which are grape leaves stuffed with rice, which I'll make in another episode. They're my favorite. I kind of say that everything's my favorite. So we'll put this. So I'm using five grape leaves for this one. Wrap that there, our salmon in the center. Good amount. So I'm sure you've seen some recipes where they've wrapped fish in parchment and it basically is steaming the fish. And that's what we're doing here. But the grape leaf itself has delicious flavor as well. So we're gonna wrap that on this side and on this side, nice and tight. Pinch down, roll that. Look at that, great. Put that down. So we've wrapped our salmon. I've lined um, a baking sheet with parchment paper. We have them ready to go in the oven. And I'm just gonna brush some olive oil on top. I've laid these down with the seam side down, which will make it nicer presentation and keeps everything wrapped together. So I'm gonna brush them with olive oil. There we go. Nice 
nice and shiny. And then we're gonna put them in the oven. We're gonna go in the oven for 12 minutes at 450 degrees. Our salmon is all ready. Look at that. You can already see the leaves turning a little bit more dark green, so we know it's all set. We're gonna let it sit for a second, and I'm gonna make our lemon and olive oil sauce again. So we're gonna just do olive oil. I wasn't kidding when I told you I needed a big amount of this. I usually have a big squirt bottle, because mostly, almost all of the dishes I make have this on top. We'll put salt and pepper. We're gonna whisk that together. The lemon is really gonna bring out a great flavor in the grape leaves and of course in the salmon. So we'll whisk that. And now, also for plating, I'm gonna slice up some lemon rounds that are just gonna go right on top. Add some color to our dark green. <laughs> I always like bright colors. The yellow is really pretty. And we have some parsley. This doesn't happen to be one of my kids' favorite dishes, but it is a little bit more unique and delicious. So this is something I would do for company to come over because, you know, something a little bit different than just your traditional salmon. So I'm gonna put parsley all around the sides. And then we're gonna take our grape leaves. Grape leaf salmon, oh my goodness. They smell so good. Put them down in the center. If you love dolmades, you'll love this. So we'll put that right here. That looks great. We'll put our lemon olive oil on top. Wow, look at that. Add some more color with our lemon rounds. And we are good to go. I'm gonna put some more over here. This is all ready. Today we're making pasta with sausage and Brussels, a favorite family weeknight meal. I'm Nikki Kleckis, and this is Nikki's Modern Mediterranean. To get started on making our pasta with sausage and Brussels, we're gonna first cook our Brussels sprouts. So I have one pound of Brussels that I've cleaned and cut in half, put them into a little mixing bowl. We're just gonna add olive oil, salt and pepper, so that we can roast these while we are cooking our sausage and pasta. So I'll give this a little toss. Put that right on our baking sheet. Lay them out. And we're gonna put these in the oven. While our Brussels sprouts are cooking, I have some water up to boil and you're gonna cook one pound of your favorite short pasta. You can use penne, rigatoni, I'm using orecchiette. So while that's cooking, we're gonna get ready with our sausage. So we're gonna use four sausage links and we you can use sweet or spicy. I like to mix too sweet, too spicy. So we're gonna decase these before we cook them. So we're gonna take our sausage links and we're just gonna cut down the center, pretty easy, and we're gonna take off the casing of this. So I started making this recipe a couple years ago. I was trying to find all really colorful recipes to match for the holidays. So I really love this because we're adding the pesto and it gives it the green color. But my family ended up loving it so much and it's so hard to find recipes that all your kids will eat and they get, you know, protein and the vegetable in this. So now it's a family favorite and I make it all year long. But this is a really easy recipe because I'm using a store-bought pesto. You're just using your favorite pasta and you know, you just have a little bit of prep time and then you're just going to mix all the ingredients together and you're gonna have a delicious dish. So now I've decased the sausage, so that's easy. I'm just gonna give it a little chop too and put it in this pan right here. 
this dish. So we're gonna go over to the stove and cook this with a little olive oil and garlic. So to cook our sausage, we're gonna put medium to high heat with two tablespoons of olive oil on our pan. And you can make this while your pasta and your Brussels sprouts are getting ready. And we're gonna add two teaspoons of minced garlic. Just let this cook for just a minute. Next, we're ready to add in our sausage. So our sausage has this beautiful brown color, which means it's almost ready. So we have all of our elements ready to assemble our pasta. Our pasta is right here and cooked. Our Brussels sprouts are golden brown and so is our sausage. So here's our serving bowl, super easy. We're just gonna take our pasta, put that right in our serving bowl. Next, I'm gonna take our sausage and I'm gonna scrape everything, olive oil, the garlic, the sausage, right into this bowl. Next, our Brussels, which are so pretty. Look at this green color now. Nice golden brown Brussels sprouts. If you're making these for your kids. They're getting their veggies in. So we have our ingredients all in there, and now we're gonna mix it with pesto. And I'm just using store-bought pesto, one jar. I'm gonna put this kind of dollop it all over the place a little because I'm gonna mix it all together. And again, this is a great dinner recipe that you can make in probably 30 minutes at home, any night of the week, or make it for holiday. So we're gonna make this, mix this all together. Get the pesto on all of the pasta. Look at that. Beautiful. You can do some Parmesan on top to serve. But this pasta looks amazing. Deliciousness in this. Okay, looks ready to go. Dinner is ready. I hope you enjoyed today's episode. For the full recipe, visit NikkiGlekis.com and don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel. To get started on our baked chicken wings, I'm gonna use two pounds of jumbo chicken wings that I have rinsed and pat dry. And now we're gonna get all of our seasoning on them. So for today, I'm doing two pounds for this recipe, but when I make this for Super Bowl, I will probably quadruple this recipe because everybody loves these wings. So I'm gonna put the wings right in the bowl and we're gonna get started with all of our herbs to get a nice rub onto these wings before we bake them. So we're gonna start with two teaspoons of sea salt. Sprinkle that right on top. And these again, are we're using all the same Greek herbs that you have seen me use tons of times. So we're gonna do two teaspoons of garlic powder for this one two teaspoons of dried oregano. And look at this oregano I'm using. This one is from Greece. Nice and finely chopped there. Put that in there. We're gonna do two teaspoons of paprika. We'll add a nice color to our wings. Right on top. We're gonna do half a teaspoon of black pepper. And lastly for our herbs, I have chopped rosemary, fresh rosemary, and fresh thyme. Finally chop this, and we're gonna do one and a half tablespoons of this. Put that right on top. Now, to get this rub onto our wings, I'm gonna take off my rings here, and we're gonna do a fourth of a cup of olive oil, and this will help get our 
herbs on all of our wings here. Let's put that right on top. Look at that. You can already smell all the Greek seasoning. So with my hand, I'm gonna mix this together, massage this olive oil and herb mixture all over these wings. And in front of me, I have a wired baking rack. I think that this is the best for really baking these in the oven because you wanna get them nice and crispy. So I have preheated our oven to 400 degrees and we're gonna bake these for about 40 minutes. We'll kind of turn them after 20 minutes and then we'll broil them to get them extra crispy. So here we go. We have all the herbs all over the wings and you'll see here, it really has absorbed everything we put in here. So we're gonna put these wings right down here. Baking wings is always a great alternative to frying them anyway, and a little healthier for you and super easy. Just really put them right in the oven. So we'll put these down here. And now we're ready to pop them in the oven at 400 degrees. It's been about 20 minutes, so I am flipping these chicken wings. You can see them sizzling. They look amazing. We've taken our wings out of the oven. They look amazing, nice and crispy. So I'm gonna plate them here on this platter with my delicious Greek yogurt blue cheese dip and some celery. Look at these. This is gonna be a hit in my next football party too. Nice and juicy. Perfect. These wings are ready. For the full recipe, visit NikkiKlekis.com and don't forget to like and subscribe to my channel.